Fresh from a whirlwind of controversy, The Trues. Introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Sean Dalton. I play the drums. Hello, I'm Jack Siprek. I play the bass. And I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Supposedly, you came close to this near-death experience. Tell me about it in typical Spinal Tap fashion. Okay. Well, uh, it was. Uh, I don't really know. I mean, it's one of these things. I just cut my knuckle open on my uh, one of the drum pieces of the hi hat. And anyway, I mean, it uh, it got it got infected, you know, and it, it got kind of you know kind of funky and kind of pussy and stuff. You and go to the hospital. Well, no, I kind of I just you know I just thought it'd be cool to let it set in for a few days maybe. And uh, anyway, a couple of days later, uh, my my whole hand was kind of hurting and. Uh, I went down to get some peroxide from one of the security guards uh, downstairs at the um, at the Fairmont Hotel, and sure enough, he looked at it and said that he thought I had blood poisoning, and he showed me where he, I, that he thought that I had, and of course there was a, a red line running up my up, up, up my arm into my armpit. So anyway, uh, yeah, I went to the hospital, and and they said it was kind of like one of these things that if it wasn't treated, it was uh, it was fatal. So uh, yeah, so they hooked me up to an IV that night. Uh, the next day, same thing. Um, and they left the IV in my arm, taped it up. So uh, when we actually did play the ECMA uh, show, showcase, the big one, uh, I, was, I was heavily taped up. Yeah, no. So, yeah, it was a close call, but, uh, you know. He, he inevitably saved your life, though. Absolutely, yeah. It was just one of those, it, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I mean, it was, I, like I said, I was just going to clean it up. I didn't think, you know, I knew it was infected, but I didn't think there was anything wrong. And anyway, it turns out it was... Yeah. Otherwise, this would have been a Spinal Tap interview. Well, that drummer died. Exactly. And <laughs> it's a blood poisoning accident. He choked on someone else's vomit. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, the House of Ill Fame, the Trues, produced by Mr. Big Sugar himself, Gordy Johnson. How did that relationship happen? Um, the relationship happened, well, we were actually, uh, we had a weekly gig at Jeff Healy's Club in Toronto. Um, and then uh, a friend of Jeff's actually got us on breakfast television in Toronto one day. That's an explosion. Ooh. Uh, anyway, uh, so this guy Larry Wanagus, who happened to be Big Sugar's manager, saw us on television, uh, and uh, they announced, you know, on the on the program that we'd be playing, you know, at, at Healy's every uh, Thursday night. So he came down to check it out, and uh, he really dug it. And uh, he came down a few more times, except you know the third or fourth time, he brought uh, Gordy Johnson down, who was the you know the lead singer for Big Sugar, and uh, Gordy liked it himself, so he. Uh, he yanked us into the studio and became your big sugar daddy. It became the big daddy. Yeah, he took us and cleaned us up, and yeah, yeah def absolutely, it was really cool. And you guys are originally from a small town in Nova Scotia. Yeah, well, the other the three guys are actually from um, Annie Ganish, Nova Scotia, which is a couple of uh, hours outside of Halifax, and I'm from uh, St. John's, Newfoundland. Right on. And but you moved to Niagara Falls, the city of love and honeymoon suite. What prompted that move? Um, <laughs> that's the worst question you possibly could have put that in front of me. <laughs> It's, uh, it's one that I refuse to answer because I've answered to so many guys times. <laughs> it just happened, actually. It just happened. It just happens. It was a good move. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, you know, just, we kind of didn't really know where we were going to end up. We hopped in a van and said, let's just move to Ontario. Let's just mix it up. And uh, it turned out we had some friends in Buffalo that we were kind of hanging out with at the time. Uh, so we just kind of, you know, trotted around from, you know, Hamilton to, to Niagara Falls to Buffalo and then uh, found a little place in uh, Niagara Falls that we, that was affordable, you know, and close enough to uh, the action. So we took it and uh, lived there for a couple of years and, and now we're actually living in St. Catharines, so. And getting on a tour like this obviously gives you exposure and opens you up to an audience that wouldn't necessarily get to hear your music. So how did Kroger and the boys find out about who you guys were? Uh, we actually got placed on a bill in Halifax. Um, couple of summers ago and uh, Citadel Hill uh, and uh, we were the first band on so we were kind of the nobodies on the bill and uh, coincidentally Chad was actually standing side stage checking it out the whole time so I was kind of just playing at my drum kit and I looked back and sure enough you know Finger Eleven were on one side and there was Chad Kroger with his arms crossed on the other side and uh, he kind of he really dug it I guess after the set he was kind of talking to uh, his crew and just you know we're wondering who we were and if we were signed and anyway he ordered in uh, 20 copies of the CD and you know pass them around to his friends and listen to him himself and uh, and the rest is uh, the rest is history you know he just kind of took us under his wing for the for, for nine shows so and a lot of things are happening because you've cracked you know the much music countdown and um, this tour and all these things are happening one after the other nominated for a Juno as well so where is this going to take you next where um, where where do you think we're going where are we headed with all this um, it's a good question. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna keep doing it uh, as long as we can. You know, as, uh, we have, you know, fantastic fans in, in Nova Scotia and in Newfoundland and New Brunswick and uh, you know, in Ontario. You know, we've got a, a pretty loyal fan base. 
and uh, I think they're going to keep following us around everywhere we go. So we're going to uh, we're going to stick with them, uh, and you know just try to push this thing as far as it'll go. You know, I mean, if if, if it gets humongous, great, and if it doesn't, then we're still going to do it because it's kind of the Canadian way, just to tour around and uh, and work harder than you need to sometimes for something that you really love to do. So. Is there any opportunity stateside, or uh, I think so. I mean, we 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 do play in uh, in Buffalo every now and again, um, and Lewiston, New York, I think, is the other one. Um, but yeah, but uh, you know, who knows? We're going to see what uh, what Sony can do for us if they want to start pushing us in the states. And great, you know, um, I know that Larry, our manager, has worked with uh, Katie Lang, you know, in the past, Colin James. So he's you know had some international acts, and um, I think that yeah, I think absolutely we'd love to crack into the states. And, and if they if they uh, if they're interested, then so are we so. Well, I appreciate your time. I won't ask you ever again that question, I promise. Thanks. By this record, the truths. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Anytime. <laughs> Thanks.